I spent a bunch of this week writing lists. It was not very exciting, but lists of presents I need to buy for uh, either Emily or family. Uh, presents in extended family, because turns out I've got a lot of uh, in-laws and nephews and nieces. And so there was a, a long list of things I had to buy. There was a, a list then I started to make of all the things that I needed to get done, say, between now and, and Christmas, with a number of extra services. That list sort of added up. I was a little behind on worship planning, so there was a list of things that I needed to do with, with that. Friday night, Emily and I talked about another list of all the things needed to be done between now and Thanksgiving because we're having some friends over. So there were things that needed to get done, things that needed to get bought. There was a list of food that needed to be prepared. You look and, and say, the next month and a half is a lot of getting ready for stuff, isn't it? And, and you, get, you can think about the, the amount of time you're going to get ready for a, a relatively short amount of time to actually enjoy those things. I suppose that's what, though, this month and a half has a lot to do with, right? Getting ready, preparing for things that are coming up. And what's neat is just how well the church year fits into that. We've just spent the last two, three weeks talking about uh, all the things that are going to happen when our, our Savior returns. Right? We, we've heard about the, the wonderful blessing we have of eternal life that's waiting for us and, and the joy that we will have in being able to spend an eternity face to face with our God. And we've also heard the judgment that's also coming. The judgment of, for those who have rejected God and his word and receiving the exact opposite of what we do. Instead of the, the joy of being in, in God's presence for an eternity, they will spend an eternity separated from God and his love. A situation so bad, we, we call it hell. As we do that, and we hear those things, it helps us prepare for our Savior's return. And as we move forward into, into a new church year, into the season of Advent, that really becomes our focus now, of looking forward to, to celebrating our, our Savior taking on flesh and, and coming to earth in order to save us, but with our eyes also to the sky as we look forward to our Savior's return. When our salvation is, is finally complete in the sense that now I will receive the, the ultimate joy and, and the ultimate goal of my salvation, that eternal life with my Savior. And so we heard today in all three of our lessons an encouragement for you and I to be ready, to be prepared, right? To, to keep watch, to know that our Savior is planning on coming again soon and because we don't know exactly what day that will be, that each and every day as children of God, we are to be ready, to be prepared, to, to have the attitude that this may be the day my Savior returns or my Savior takes me to my home in heaven. And as a result, I want to be ready, prepared. And it's the same thing we heard echoed in our, our second lesson this morning from the book of Revelation. Right? He tells us to keep ready, to keep watch. And in the very first verse, he says, These words are trustworthy and true. The Lord, the God of the spirits of the prophets, sent his angel to show his servants the things that must soon take place. He, he reminds us and encourages us that the, the words, all the things that John had just seen, these fantastic pictures that you, you read about in the book of Revelation, all of them are, are trustworthy and true, and they show the things that will take place. Which means for you and I, as we look through and read the book of Revelation, well, there may be plenty of things that, that, that cause us to scratch our head. There may be things that just these fantastical pictures that, that Jesus paints for John and for you and I, they're pictures that are meant to comfort us, comfort us because they're things that are going to happen. We know they're trustworthy and true. And they're things that remind us that our Savior is coming again soon. And so we are to be prepared. 
he encourages us and reminds us that these things are, are going to happen, which means that the book of Revelation is, is relevant today. Because in it, our Savior is describing those things that will happen between now and when our, our Savior comes back. And that's really the whole comfort he gives us, isn't it? Because he repeats it twice. Behold, I am coming again soon. And he says, Blessed then is he who keeps the words of prophecy in this book. Blessed are you and I as we take the time to read and study God's word. God says that he's going to bless the time that you and I spend opening up the pages of scripture and, and, and reading again and again all, of, of, all about God's love for us, about our Savior and, and what he's done for us. Pondering how that message of, of the forgiveness of sins affects our life as children of God and, and, and the fruits of, of that faith and what it begins to look like in my life. Right? He says, as you ponder and as you read and study those things, you're going to be blessed by God because your faith is going to continue to grow. You're going to be strengthened. I hear those words. And they register logically up in my head right here is a promise from god that says as i read and study and grow in god's word i'm going to be blessed it's simple and yet for me it's hard i go back to those lists that i make each and every day and i succumb and I look at those lists and what I see are all the things that I need to do. And what happens often, more often than I would care to admit, is that those things on that list take priority then over the promise God has given me. And suddenly I, I hear that promise of God that says, I'm going to be blessed and prepared and ready for my Savior's return. And what ends up happening is that I start doing all the things on my list rather than taking the time to just sit at my Savior's feet and listen. Maybe it's like that for you in, in your life, too. Where the busyness of life seems to take precedent and, and scream for all your time and attention rather than being able to carve out 15 minutes and say, I'm going to spend some time with my Savior. It's hard because, well, I have a sinful nature that wants nothing to do with God and His Word. That's all too happy to let any number of the distractions of the season, of my day, of the things that are going on, of my lists, pull me away from the one thing needful. Right, I hear those promises of God and I hear that, that reminder that, that echoes in my ear that Jesus is coming soon. Get ready. And I procrastinate. But procrastination really only works if you know when the deadline is and how much time I have left or if I don't really care about what I'm procrastinating on. Because then it's not going to matter to me whether or not I get the work done. And what's dangerous about procrastinating in getting ready for Jesus' return is I don't know the day. And my sinful nature is going to scream in my ear and say, you've got plenty of time. He hasn't come for the last 2,000 years. What makes you think today is going to be the day? And so I begin to put off and push off, sometimes in favor of my list, things that I should be doing today in order to prepare. And the danger is if I keep pushing it off, what happens? I can very easily get to the day when Jesus does come back, and it's too late, and I regret it. It can get to the point where if I continue to push off the time I spend with God and his word, and that not only do I regret it, but I'm not prepared. 
that I found that I've comforted myself with saying, yeah, I know what God says in his word, all the while having a faith that slowly dies in my heart. So that on that last day, not only am I not prepared, I'm not even found as a child of God. And that's the danger, isn't it? It's the danger for children of God who, who understand and know the promises that God has given in his word. Is that we, we hear and, and recognize and we hear those things so often is that we begin to take them for granted. And if we're not careful, we can be unprepared. And so God's encouragement in his, in his, God's encouragement in his word Right, is for that you and I, for you and I to be ready, to be prepared. Right? He says, because his reward is coming with him. And he's going to give to everyone according to what he has done. Right? So that we look at those things and say, finally, when that day comes, our Savior is going to come and he's going to look at, at what we've done. And what Jesus isn't saying there is that you and I are saved because of what we have done. Because as Christians, we look at the rest of God's word, right, that screams at us and says, this is how we are saved. We are saved because of what Jesus has done for us, right? And he reminds us again and again of those things that our God has done. He's, he came, he took on human flesh, he lived perfectly in our place, he died on the cross, he took the punishment that our sins deserved, and he rose from the dead to make sure that you and I would know for certain that sin is paid for, that the devil has been defeated, death has been destroyed. And now as a result of that, what goes on in the believer's life? A life of service. A life of good works. Right? If, if I were to go into an apple orchard and look at an apple tree, what should I expect to see? apples. When Jesus returns and looks at the life of a child of God, what is he going to see? A life of service and good works because that is what naturally flows from a faith that trusts in God so that when Jesus comes and he says, when I return, I'm going to judge you according to what you have done, all he is saying is he's going to look at your life and say, yeah, there's evidence of a, of, of a child of God. There's evidence of faith there that trusts in Jesus. And what does it look like? It looks like a life of love lived for God and for neighbor. A life full of good works. And as a result, he says, my reward comes to them. Right? Jesus rewards a, a, a faith that trusts in him and the forgiveness that he brought, that he brought with all the blessings that are, that are ours because of, what our, that, because of what Jesus has done. Not just forgiveness, but now life eternal. And the flip side of that is true too, isn't it? That as he comes and he looks at the lives of people who have rejected God's word, who have ignored his pleas to be ready and to keep watch, right? He's going to see a life centered on themselves. A life that, not, that isn't filled with works that are pleasing to God. And as a result, give them what their sins deserve. Eternal separation from God and his love. It's no wonder then that our God comes to us and says, be ready. Be prepared. So the next question is, how do I do that? Right? Be in God's Word. Read and, and study and take 10, 15 minutes or more a day to, to, to read and, and study and ponder on the things that God has revealed to you, you in His Word. Be here at church for, for Bible class. Be here regularly in, in worship more often than you're not here. Because that's how God prepares us. Right? Have devotions at, at home with your, your spouse, with your family, with your kids. And as you begin to hear those things about, about how we prepare our hearts for our Savior, and you, you might think to yourself, I've never done that. I don't know how to do it. 
I don't know what to use. Guess what? That's why you pay me. You can ask me. That's my job. I'm here to equip you so that you can be prepared, that you can prepare your family, so that I can equip you to live a life of service to your God and to your neighbor. So that on that day, when Jesus comes back, you and your family are ready and waiting. Amen. And the peace of God, which goes beyond our understanding, will guard and will keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Our Savior Lutheran Church is located on the south side of Birmingham off Highway 280. We are on Dunnett Valley Road, about three quarters of a mile east of Treetop Family Adventure and Sports Blast. Our Sunday services begin at 1015 with Sunday School and Bible Class at 9 o'clock. We welcome visitors and hope to see you soon. For more information, please visit our website at OurSaviorBirmingham.com. Click on Sermons at the top of the page for a copy of today's service folder. You can also find us online on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.